what's up guys it's the new sensation bigger notation here and today we're coming back from a brief hiatus just over the christmas period um what with finals being done i was failing fairly burnt out from the game um, just with all the testing that i put in prior to it and obviously wanted to spend some time over christmas to celebrate and all of that but uh happy new year to everyone watching of course and we're back hopefully with some uh you know fairly regular content i'm not going to be uh promising a regular schedule or anything like that because that's not something i could stick to but you know occasional deck profiles and gameplay here and there that kind of thing um but we're bringing it back with uh a deck and a leader that i was very interested in from the new set um that kind of caught my eye and that is the gotenk superhero deck um so kind of looking over sort of the leader and the archetype that came with the deck when it came to like the spoiler season i was quite interested in this deck um i thought that the leader on its own felt like fairly strong for a um for like a mid-range or more aggressive blue leader it seemed like um like a much uh it seemed like a very generically good leader um that necessarily didn't need um, its whole archetype to function um, and as well if it had like a fairly small archetype that could be used consistently sort of like Trunks Jeter then it could end up being quite a strong deck but then as more and more of the archetype cards got revealed um, they all just looked very very underwhelming like a lot of the the Gotens and the Trunks that come with the deck um, are basically just um, one drop 15ks that draw a card like they have a, a couple of extra effects but none of them really feel like they come up um, and then the boss monster for the deck the eight drop it, it's some nice barrier removal for blue which blue obviously really needed some bar barrier removal but we also got the beerus in the same set um, for the z deck which is much more efficient barrier removal as well as just much wider board removal in general and it can apply a lot more pressure whereas the boss monster for this deck after you attack with it, you then have to use your leader effect every turn to pay one energy and combo two guys out your hand to then just restand it every turn because it doesn't restand naturally during the charge phase. So it felt like the leader definitely has some potential, but the rest of the archetype just was really lackluster uh, for what I expected it to be. And so that, that kind of dashed my hopes for the deck a bit, but I did have uh, a little bit more of an interesting idea for the deck. Um, especially going into this off season this isn't meant to be like a competitive deck by any means um, it's definitely slated much more to be towards being a, a very fun deck to play in off season maybe just bring it to locals um, but it can definitely catch some people off guard and it's it's really enjoyable to play and I've, i feel like i've taken a fairly um, unique spin on this leader um, just with some of the strengths that the leader has on its own as a generic blue leader rather than more of an archetype focus on the deck um, so we'll get straight into the deck. So to cover the leader, um, basically the main thing, you, main things you need to know would be that on the front side, uh, it's got a once per turn auto where if you combo with a blue battle card from your hand, uh, you draw a card. So sort of similar to the uh, Gogeta leader from the previous set front side, except you do have to combo from hand, which is annoying because there are some guys that you bring out onto the board earlier on that you would kind of just prefer to combo off for the free draw. Um, but, you know, it's not too bad, it, it's very nice for building up Z energy and it's very nice to defend your life a little bit earlier on. Um, and then the Awaken is when your life is at 4 or less, or if you have a Sun Goten SH or a Trunks SH in either your uh, either your Z energy or your drop area, then you draw a card, untap one and cut your life down to 6. Uh, and then on the backside, uh, he gains a new auto where on attack you draw a card, but you also gain 5k. And what's important to know about that auto is that it's not once per turn, so it's every time he attacks. Um, he's also got a secondary auto, which rarely ever comes up, which I think is when he attacks uh, an 8-drop battle card, or an 8-drop or higher battle card. Um, it can't attack for the next turn, uh, and then you negate that skill for the game, so it kind of locks down an 8-drop battle card that might be sticking about on the board. Rarely ever going to come up, but sort of nice to have i guess uh, i feel like a lot of this archetype just had these weird situational effects similar to that auto um, which is why i t decided to go for a, a more of a different approach with this deck and then the main thing is the activate battle once per turn you pay a blue energy if there is a sun go 10 sh and a trunks sh in your combo area you draw a card you restand a gotenks sh card that you control and at the end of the turn you can untap an energy as well 
Um, so that is really nice, specifically because you can restand your leader with it, um, because it just clarifies as a Gotenks SH card, and the leader is obviously a Gotenks SH. Um, and that obviously ties in with the on-swing auto not being once per turn. Um, and so if you think about it in terms of card economy as well, you're comboing a Gotenks SH, you're comboing a Trunks SH, uh, you can combo them from hand. So let's say you combo them from hand, you go minus two in hand. Uh, you use the activate battle, you pay an energy, you draw a card, so you're now minus one in hand. Uh, you untap the energy that you tapped for it at the end of the turn, and then you restand your leader, which when it swings again is going to draw you the second card that you lost. So overall, you don't lose any cards uh, in hand, you don't lose any energy because you'll untap going into your opponent's turn, um, and you also get a free 25k swing because the leader will gain 5k extra for the turn um, and it's very important to note that that 5k extra is for the turn because that's also something that we're looking to abuse in this deck and um, this, this deck is very leader oriented so just try and keep that in mind and keep all of the leader effects in mind when uh, looking over the rest of the deck so to go straight into the deck uh, we've got a little spirit boost package to start off with um, and so our unison of choice is going to be the tapion unison um, so the reason we chose this leader is uh, this unison is for a couple of reasons. Um, the first being that it's got a very nice plus two and it's also 19k stats, uh, which means that it's very hard to remove. Um, when it comes in on turn three, it's going to be five markers, 19k, which means that it's a lot harder to take down than like a 15k unison or one that might come in, come in on turn two. Um, and it's plus two is that you switch it to rest mode and if you do, you draw a card, which is great. Um, just a very nice drawer card. Um, you don't really need to worry about uh, the fact that you lose out on a potential swing with this unison here because um, the turn that you play you're just looking to build some markers on it so that it survives for the next turn and so that you can use it for spirit boost skills. Um, it's also got a nice auto where if it's your turn and you use a spirit boost skill to remove a marker from it, once per turn you can choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards and energy cost greater than or equal to their current energy and return it to their hand. So if they've got anything that they've uh, left on the board that's just a big guy that you kind of need to remove, you can just bounce it back to the hand, not too bad. And then another big reason why we run this Tappy on Unison is for the plus zero activate main, where you can give one of your mono blue leaders plus 10k for the turn. And so here you can start to see this um, this leader leader oriented strategy is really starting to stack up already. We can buff our leader to 25k with the Tappy on Unison, and then potentially buff it a further 10k with just the leader skill alone. Um, and then obviously getting two swings out of it as well is going to be great for applying pressure. And on top of that, on the turn where you use that second activate main, you can also swing with the Tappy on Unison because you don't have to switch it to rest mode. Um, and so then following on from that, we're also running two Tappy on Calamity Challenger. Just a really nice card um, if, you're, if you've got a reliable Unison out that's going to gain a lot of markers in blue and you're looking to play more of an aggressive strategy, which this deck is definitely leaning towards more of an aggro um, orientation then this card is just great to play just nice a nice one energy double striker 20k and it draws a card on play uh, and then the main mvp of the deck probably would be this ss bardock spirit resonance so i don't think this is a card that has seen a huge amount of play it's seen some um, play here and there and i do think it's a very underrated card in blue um, just for applying extra pressure i do think that um, all of the blue sort of like aggro um, mid-range decks can be a lot of the time quite underrated. Um, I think blue is a lot of the time seen as more of a control color, but this card really does help with that aggression. So what this card does is it's got an auto limit two spirit boost two. So one of the two, the, one of the few limit two skills in the game. Um, if your opponent has three or more energy and it's your turn, when this card attacks or at the end of the battle in which it's used in a combo, um, from your hand specifically, you have you can choose one of your mono blue leader leader cards. Uh, it gets 5k power for the turn, but then you negate all of its skills for the turn, um, and you also restand it. I forgot to clarify that's so that's a very important part of it. Um, and it's also important to note with the leader activate battle, you can also only use it when your opponent has three or more energy. So this deck most of the time is looking to kill people on turn four because that's when they'll have three or more energy. Um, but yeah, you can start to see where this is sort of tying in with the rest of the deck. Um, the idea is you get the Tappy on Unison established on turn 3. Obviously, plus 2 to draw a card uh, offers that extra line of defense with the Unison markers. Um, and then at turn 4, you look to go swing with leader, uh, or you plus 0 the Tappy on Unison, make it 25k. You can swing with leader, draw a card, gain 5k, makes it 30k on swing. 
um, trigger the activate battle once you combo the two guys, um, and then restand it, swing with leader again, gain another 5k, so it's 35k, start comboing off these Bardocks, which are obviously limit two, so you can do them twice, then you get another 40k swing and a 45k swing with the Bardocks, and that's not including the combo power that you add with the Bardocks as well. So you can, yeah, it's, it really starts to stack up. It's, it's, um, it's a very fun deck to play. Uh, and if your opponent doesn't have any sort of like floodgates or anything, now that God Sealing is banned, um, then yeah, you can apply a lot of pressure just off your leader alone with this. And this Bardock also doesn't cost energy because you just have to combo with it. So it's, it's really amazing for just applying that pressure and you still have all of your energy open for the turn four. Um, and then going on to the actual sort of like Goten Trunks pieces, um, these are the ratios I'm running. So we've got four, a wild fighter is born. Um, this card basically is activate main slash battle limit one. You can search for a Trunks and a Goten from either your deck or drop to your hand. Um, so that's going to be any of these guys. Uh, the two, there's a Goten and a Trunks Tenacious Tag Team. Um, the main reason that we play then, them is just for the turn one and turn two plays. So they've got an activate main, each of them, where you pay a blue, discard it to bring the other version out. So if you're discarding a Trunks, you bring out a Goten. Um, and you can either play it or add it to your hand from your deck. Um, and then they also have autos on play. So the Trunks, I believe, bounces a one cost unison um, from your opponent's board to the hand, which is like occasionally gonna come up, but not really. And then the Goten, uh, I believe, bottom decks a four cost or less battle card. So that's much more likely to actually come up just because it's solid removal. It's a lot, it's gonna be a lot more valuable. Um, and also one drop unisons, like you rarely ever see one drop unisons outside of Demigra. Um, but then the other Goten and the other trunks are also targets that you can bring out with these tag teams. Both of them have an auto where when they're played, you draw a card. And so mo that means that most of the time you're just gonna bring out one of these two. Um, the developing teamwork pair because in the early game you're not so worried about your opponents four drops or less um, you're not like most people are just going to be setting up their plays and so you can just take the extra draw um, and then later on you might combo them off as the energy just so that you can awaken as well um, and also I forgot to mention the awaken is only live from turn two onwards so you can't awaken turn one you have to have two or more energy I believe um, but yeah, these guys, when they're played, they draw a card, so they're just very solid targets to bring out in the early game. Um, the Goten is a blocker, uh, and if you have a Trunks SH card in your combo area, you can activate battle, switch it to active mode, but it can't attack for the turn, so it's not like it becomes a dual attacker or anything, it's just to use as a double blocker. Um, and the Trunks is a revenge. And if you've got the Goten in the combo area, you can activate battle, give it 5k for the turn. So like, again, pretty weird, kind of very situational effects on each of these. Um, but so they basically never come up. Most of the time you're just playing these as like glorified one drop 15k cantrips um, just off of the tag teams. But like occasionally it comes up. Um, but yeah, the main reason that we're playing each of these is to facilitate not only the awaken, but also the activate battle to resolve consistently. Um, and they also have ways the developing teamworks can play themselves for one energy on activate main if you have the opposite um, the opposite kind of character in the Z energy. So if you've got a Trunks in Z energy, you can play the Goten from hand. From hand. Um, so that's pretty much the ratios that I'm running on the Trunks and Goten stuff. Like I said, it's very uh, small in terms of archetype cards. I'm just not really th um, that attached to the archetype that this leader comes with because I feel like a lot of the cards are very underwhelming. Like I said, these guys are basically just glorified one-drop cantrips. Um, and then the boss monster is like, yeah, it's very underwhelming for what it is. Um, so yeah, we're just going with more of a generic blue route, uh, focusing more on the leader and the fact that you can resand the leader multiple times, buff it up as much as you want, and then just keep on swinging with just the leader over and over. Um, and these guys basically just going to facilitate that uh, most of the time. I don't think you ever really play these guys past turn two because past then you've already awakened and you just want to save them to combo off with to use the leader activate battle. Um, and then going into sort of the more generic aggro blue tools that blue has recently got, um, we've obviously got four Piccolo the Infiltrator. This is a lot of the time your, um, your ideal turn two play. Um, it's just playing this guy and then bringing out the pan or giving it barrier if you're against a green deck um, or something that you might need barrier against. Um, and then 
yeah, just a very, very efficient card. Get, getting a 20k jewel attack out on turn two is amazing. And then if you've given it barrier and it sticks around for the next turn, then it's going to be even better. Uh, because turn three and turn four is really where the stack starts to pop off. Um, and a lot of the times you can awaken alongside this piccolo on turn two. Because uh, you'll have either used one of the tag teams and that'll get one of them in drop. And then you can also combo uh, one of the others from your hand, like the opposite of the pair. Um, from your hand either during your opponent's turn if they swing to your leader or during your turn just on, on one of the first swings of the piccolo um, and then that'll get one in z energy one in drop and as long as there are a trunks and a goten rather than two gotens or two trunkses then you'll be able to awaken and then going on to more of the aggressive tools that blue got we've got two of the uh, rose goku black from the anniversary box this is a card that i kind of want to up to uh, more copies than this maybe like three or four um, but I don't really know what I'd take out. I think the main thing I could consider lowering down the ratios on would be this Tapion, because um, they kind of serve a similar purpose of being one drop uh, draw a card 20k double strikers, but the Rose Goku Black is just more flexible. It doesn't need the spirit boost. Um, it can be used on activate battle, so during either player's turn, and it also has that inbuilt removal. Um, so probably would consider cutting the Tapion down to one copy and going up to three of the Goku Black. Um, it, there is definitely value to going like a more of a split, like going one Tapion rather than four of the Goku Black, um, keeping it at one, three, or two, two. Um, just because then if you have both of them, um, the fact that their effect to limit one doesn't like restrict you in any way, you can still play both. But I could definitely see myself going down to one of this uh, Tapion Calamity Challenger and going to three Goku Black, just because overall it is a better card and the conditions for it are very easy to fill. Um, because you build so much Z energy on the front side super early, you can build like two or three Z energy pretty much immediately. And then all of these Bardocks are going to go into Z energy once you finish comboing them as well. Um, and so, yeah, it's very easy to build Z energy, and you rarely ever use your Z energy as well in this deck. Um, most of the time, you're just playing out cards from hand. Because a lot of the cards you play out from hand in this deck are like cantrips but with bonus effects like this guy draws a card the piccolo if you bring out pan is going to draw a card tapion draws a card and then all of the trunks and goten engine basically draws a card as long as you're bringing out the developing team works off of the tag teams um so yeah continuing with uh more generic blue stuff we've got uh the four copies of this gohan um this is kind of like the only real defense that i've put into the deck is four copies of this gohan um, there are a couple of negates that i also added in just hard negates um, to help with the defense as well but like you really don't need that much defense in this deck it's really pivoted towards more of an aggressive play style um, but there are turns where like you need to you need a little bit more time to set up um, or you haven't just drawn the full combo yet of like two of this bardock and the unison um, and some of the other cards which we'll get into later so you can just like play this guy as a way to stall out another turn or two um, and use the activate main as well alongside that just for the floodgate um, but yeah, this card is just insanely strong for what it is. Um, being able to play it as a 15k after comboing it um, and then and paying a total of 2 energy for its floodgate effect, which is like very hard to interact with, um, is extremely strong. Absolutely. Um, and then for super combos, we've just gone for 4 uh, Vegeta. Um, this deck is it's fairly easy to get down to 4 life. Um, you don't really have any ways of sort of taking your own life other than the Awaken going down to 6. Um, but we do run some sparking negates which you can use and most of the time you don't really have a board for them to swing into up until turn four um, because and then turn four is where you're kind of looking to kill them more so most of the time your opponent will just take you down to four and we do also run a surmounting in the z deck just to guarantee that you can get down to four as well and a lot of the time on the kill turn on turn four it does start to become a game of just cycling through super combos until you find all of the pieces that you're looking for um, so yeah, the super combos are definitely very important and it's important to cycle as much as possible, um, especially in this deck for the super combos, because you want to see as many new cards as possible so that you can guarantee kill them on turn 4. And then we're also running two of this uh, new SR from set 19, the Sun Goku and Vegeta Immortal Rivalry. So this is a very interesting card, um, it's 15k deflect. Uh, it's got an activate battle limit one for one blue energy. If your leader is blue and this card is in your Z energy and you discard a card from your hand, you can use up to two mono blue uh, cards from your drop area in a combo as long as they have 5k combo power. 
and they have their skills negated for the turn. And then additionally, if there are then three or more cards in your combo area, you can play this card from your Z energy, and when it's played, you draw a card. So this card is extremely nice for this deck, um, because it can facilitate your leaders activate battle without you having the Goten and the Trunks in your hand. Um, because you can then just use the activate battle on this to pay one discard a card and combo the Goten and the Trunks from your drop area rather than your hand. And their skills being negated doesn't really matter because you just want them in the combo area so that you can use the activate battle on leader to get the restand. Um, and then if, you, if you're looking to really kill them this turn, then you want to combo a card before you use this effect just so that you can then play this card from Z energy and then draw a card as well. And then it's just a bonus extra 15k swing, but it also cycles you a card out your hand, um, which is really nice, uh, again, for looking those looking for those extra pieces just so that you can guaranteed kill them early on. Um, but yeah, this is mostly there to facilitate the um, activate battle on the leader. And also, if you don't have three or more cards in your combo area, then it won't play itself, but it will stay in your Z energy, so you can just then use it again next turn. Um, so if you're not looking to kill them on a turn, but you do want to use the activate battle, uh, you can just use this activate battle to facilitate the leader activate battle and then just apply a bit more pressure, get a couple more draws, and yeah, it's just a very, very nice card for the deck. Um, and it's especially good to see it early on because then you can combo it off to charge it into Z, into Z energy. Um, and if you are unawakened at that point, then you draw a card to replace it, which is great. Uh, means you're not just losing the 5k from hand. Um, this is a card that I would consider upping to maybe three copies as well, but uh, I just really don't have the space and most of the time you only ever need to see one copy of this for it to really help you out throughout the game um, because you can just keep you know, using the same activate battle until you need to kill them, in which case you can then just play the card from Z energy with the activate battle. Um, so I do feel like you never really need four copies of this card, but like two or three would probably be ideal. Um, and then for over armor choice, I've gone for a bit of a different one. We've gone for Supreme Kai of Time and Light's Guide at two copies. Um, very simple card, just over realm three. And when you play this card using over realm, if your leader is red or blue, you can give your leader 5k for the turn and then draw a card. So again, you can see this tying in with the idea of just being an aggressive leader focused deck. Um, again, this is another card that's just going to buff the leader 5k and it's going to buff it for the turn. So you're going to be able to get value out of it for every leader swing which you're doing. Uh, which can be a maximum of five swings, which we'll get into once I've uh, shown off the last couple of cards as well. But yeah, just really going all in on that leader focus. Um, the main thing to watch out for with this card is that if you do overrealm, um, then you won't have the Goten and the Trunks in the drop area anymore to trigger the Immortal Rivalry and use the Activate Battle. Um, so you do need to watch out for that, but if you have the Goten and Trunks in hand or on board, um, then you can use that to get them into drop or just combo them off to trigger the activate battle on leader without using the immortal rivalry and then you're set up for next turn as well. Um, but that's the only real thing to watch out for. This overrun is just really nice. F f free 15k body, um, draws a card, replaces itself and then also buffs the leader to um, stay in line with the deck. And then for Secret Rare of choice, I've decided to go for the Beast Gohan. Again, we're, we're an aggressive blue deck, so we want to be burning them alive. Uh, we don't really care about Hatch, like gaining an extra turn doesn't do a whole lot for this deck, you just want to kill them as soon as possible. So burning them alive is going to be massive, getting an extra 40k, um, well getting two 40k crit swings in is massive. And then again, this is another way that we can restand the leader with the activate main slash battle. So if we do see our secret rare, that's another way we can restand the leader. So you can really see how this is starting to stack up as well. Uh, makes for a really, really fun combination on uh, turn four if you see all of the right pieces. And then last card in the deck, just slotted in 4D magics, um, just for a little bit of defense so that you don't get caught off guard with the odd like triple strike that might sneak through or quad strike, that sort of thing. Um, just so that you are, you're kind of, you've got something to fall back on if, uh, if all else fails. Um, and also this deck is like really good at using its energy during the opponent's turn surprisingly because you have the activate battle on the leader which can just like cycle you a card if, you, if you're comboing a Goten and a Trunks. Um, you can also, I believe that you can bring in the Goten um, after combo during your opponent's turn, it doesn't have to be during your turn. Um, you also have the Goku Blacks as well. Um, you also have a Wild Fighter is Born, which is activate main slash battle, so you can use it during opponent's turn. And you also have a Mortal Rivalry just to give you that extra combo power. You can even play it during the opponent's turn. Um, so, like, there's a lot of efficient ways to use the energy that you generate off of D-Magic during your opponent's turn. 
So it really makes it a very, very nice card to have in the deck, just to give you that extra defense, but also if your opponent then keeps swinging, you can then just use it to build a board during your opponent's turn, um, which is, yeah, extremely powerful. Um, this is obviously a deck that would have hugely benefited off of um, the old Senzu Bean, but now with its errata, I do not feel like Bean is really worth running in the deck. I feel like D-Magic is just going to be a better version of Bean for this deck. Um, but that's the whole main deck. Um, I'll cover the Z deck in a minute and a couple of cards to consider as well. But just before I do that, I just want to run through kind of the combo, on the ideal combo on turn four. Um, so obviously you would have your Tapio and Unison out at five markers, hopefully. You can use the plus zero to buff the leader by uh, 10k, making it 25. Um, you can then Overrealm um, to buff the leader again by a further 5k to draw a card. And then uh, that makes it 30k in total. You can then swing it to leader, um, you combo the Goten and the Trunks, or if you have them in drop, um, then prior to the Overrealm you would use the Immortal Rivalry to um, do that, and then Overrealm after you combo to trigger the Activate Battle. Um, but you can Overrealm, and then swing with leader, combo the Goten and the Trunks. Um, so currently you'll be swinging for uh, 15, 25, 30, 35k on the first swing. Um, you then combo the two so that makes you 45 with the combo power uh, you restand your leader you draw an extra card um, and then you draw off the auto as well uh, and then you can swing with leader again in um, that will make it i believe 40k base um, you can drop the secret rare hopefully burning them alive as well um, and then use the secret rare to swing 40k use the activate battle on the swing so that you can restand it to give it crit and then restand the leader as well and then swing again with the Gohan, obviously. Um, but then going back to the leader, the main focus of the deck, uh, we'll be swinging leader again. So I believe that's at 45k base right now, and you're also triggering the on-swing auto to draw a card as well, um, because its skills aren't negated yet. So that becomes 45k. Uh, and then on that swing, you would ideally combo off one of these Bardocks, um, use the Spirit Boost 2 to then restand the leader, buffing it to 50k base. Um, and that would have been a 50k swing with the Bardock combo as well. You swing again with leader, and then you combo off another Bardock, and uh, then it becomes 55k. You can then Spirit Boost 2 again because it's limit 2, restand it, and then get another 55k base swing off just with your leader. Um, and in total, that only costs you 3 energy, so 1 for the Activate Battle on leader, and then 2 for the SCR. So if it's turn 4, which it should be because you'll have your Unison down by that point, uh, you also have another energy to potentially play with, so in the case where you were struggling to find the Goten in the trunks but they were in drop area, that's the other energy you can use for Immortal Rivalry, um, but if not you can just drop a Goku Black or Gohan just for an extra swing, Tapion as well as a double striker, that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a very fun deck as as I said, um, you can look to obviously swing up to five times on a turn with your leader uh, and then go up to 55k base which is absolutely insane and hilariously fun. Um, the main reason why I'm not running a card like Champa in the deck um, is because if I negate the skills on the leader with the Bardock, which most of the time I will be doing, I can't then give it double strike um, later in the turn. So even though I'm getting to these huge power numbers uh, with the leader alone, I feel like the double strike is really not worth uh, running just because most of the time my leader skills will be negated. Um, you could potentially run it for one of the earlier leader swings, um, but I just feel like you'll need to get them down to lower life with those earlier swings anyways. So a lot of the time the later swings are going to be the ones that are actually potentially going to be killing them. So that's the main reason I'm not running a card like Champer in the deck, but I'll cover that in a little bit as well. Um, to go into the Z deck as well. So we have um, two Beerus Area Annihilator. Um, just my theory with the Z deck before I cover it as well is that um, obviously we're looking to play more of an aggressive blue deck, which is why I'm not running a card length of Vegito. Um, but also, we really don't use the Z deck all that often. I don't think I've ever played a card from the Z deck in my time playing this deck. Um, just because, like, it's we, we really don't need to. We're more focused on just assembling the combo for the leader swings. Um, but, like, occasionally it can come up. So I've kind of just gone for, like, one of each of the low-to-the-ground guys, just in case they come up during a game. Um, but most of the time, like, you're not going to need these. Um, but it's kind of like a toolbox that you can potentially have access to then. Uh, but yeah, we've got two Beerus Area Annihilator, just in case you need to remove something through barrier, um, or in case you don't want to kill them on turn four, but uh, or you don't have the whole, like, leader swing combo on turn four. Um, but you can just apply some pressure with the uh, with the fact that you can give it effective triple attack there. 
um, one Sun Goku stronger together. So this card's just quite nice um, being able to bottom deck a lot of your opponent's hand if, if their hand size gets out of control. Um, but also it has the nice situational effect where you can give the Immortal Rivalry triple strike for the battle uh, because it's the only card in the deck that has two character names. Um, so occasionally that can come up and you can find a way to sneak through there. Uh, one Cell, just a very, very strong card. Um, one Vegeta, this is kind of similar theory to the Goku. Um, it has the same sort of auto where you can reduce the opponent's hand size, but it will actually potentially be a, a threatening attacker instead, whereas the Goku is only 4k. So if you don't have the Immortal Rivalry down or you're not planning to play it, uh, you can just play this guy instead and have it as an actual 15k swinger instead. Um, but it also uh, can potentially war uh, combo with a 5k blue battle card from drop, so that can be halfway towards your leader activate battle as well, in case you don't see the immortal rivalry earlier enough. Um, and then one of the uh, Sun Goku Awakened Onslaught, so this guy is basically just a one drop 15k swinger, um, can occasionally come up where you discard a D magic to draw a card and gain crit for the turn, but most of the time it's just if you need another swinger and you don't have one for one energy, you just drop this from Z deck. And then the one semantic, this is mostly there to get your super combos live if they're not already, just so that you can cycle for hopefully the secret rare, but if not the rest of your pieces um, to look for on turn four. And then the main last card that I was thinking about um, putting in uh, was a very fun card, a very old card as well, all the way back from set one, is Encouraging Presence Monarcha. So a very simple effect, activate main, your leader gains double strike for the duration of the turn, then draw a card. Um, and you can kind of see why this card would fit with fit well within the deck, because you can uh, obviously use it at the start of the turn. Um, and on turn four, if you don't need the Immortal Rivalry, like I've already said, you can, um, you can play out the whole turn if you have the Secret Rare and still have one energy left over, so you can start the turn with the Monarcha. Uh, but it kind of means that those like early two or three potential leader swings that go through before you start to negate the leader skills with the Bardock, uh, will actually be threatening double strike swings and they'll be fairly big as well with the Tapion plus zero. You can get them up to like 30 to 45k without using the Bardock. Um, and so like having all of those swings be double strikes is actually quite a big threat. Um, and so I do feel like a Encouraging Presence Monarcha is potentially better than a card like Champor or um, the double strike Kai as well just for this deck um, because you are pretty much just swinging with your leader in this deck and so the Monarcha is really gonna just do a lot more because it will give you double strike for the turn rather than just for the battle. Um, but that's pretty much the whole deck. Um, it's a very fun deck, like I've said a couple times already. Uh, definitely not one that you want to take to any sort of big events, but it, it can definitely do well at a locals, I feel like. Uh, and it's very funny to pull off as well. Just being able to swing with your leader like five times in a turn is absolutely hilarious. So I definitely do de uh, I definitely do recommend it for anyone looking to try out some more fun, um, more aggressive blue decks. Um, I feel like, especially with Set 19's release, Blue has just got a lot better aggressive tools recently, and so it can really make for decks like this to potentially just do really, really well. Um, so I do definitely hope you guys uh, enjoyed the deck profile. I'll have the link to the um, deck list in the description as well for anyone looking to try it. Um, but other than that, thank you guys very much for watching. Hopefully you give this deck a try and you enjoy it, and I'll see you guys in the next one.